been sick, therefore our timekeeper is not doing an efficient job, which would be me currently. <laughs> we are starting two minutes late for that. Oh I, I apologize. We will meet you out here exactly on time because that's what I would definitely is hold up one side of the bargain that way. Today we have a pretty good program. We have two really, really unique businesses. I want to remind you to turn your phones on mute so that where we don't interrupt them while they're speaking. They'll have six minutes to talk about their business product plans, issues, and what's going on. And then the timekeeper back there will reach up and say, hey, you got six minutes or three minutes coming left. And then we'll have a question and answer session as well. Okay. So then we'll go on to the next one. Carol Jones brought these great people here, so she's going to introduce them. I am so excited. These are my peeps from Evansville, and, and they have some products that would be interesting, and they spill coffee. Um, to you guys, my, the first presenter is Jody Wasmer with I'm Your VIP, and we had his services in the chiropractor's office that I worked in, and it was fabulous. So give it up for Jody Wasmer. Good morning. I'm uh, happy to be here today. Uh, who remembers what happened on December 6th? of last year. Anybody have any hint, idea what happened last year on December 6th? I was getting ready for my Pearl Harbor Day party. It was a Friday. It was a Friday. If, any, if that helps anybody. Yeah. Well, in, uh, in Evansville that day, we had about six inches of snow on that Friday morning. That was our first big snow. And it came in a big hurry. And I'm guessing Madisonville is a lot like Evansville. When you get six inches of snow, everything pretty much shuts down. Uh, and for businesses, particularly small businesses, usually means it's going to be a pretty, pretty sad day. And uh, one of my clients called me at 11:30 that day. I work with a restaurant in Evansville called Can Pie. It's a very uh, successful, popular sushi business restaurant on uh, Washington Avenue. And the manager there's name is Matt. He called me at 11:30 that day, as it was still, still snowing. He said, "Jody, we are going to be dead today. What can we do?" So uh, in 10 minutes, I had a text message that I sent out to uh, the 2,000, roughly 2,000 subscribers, his customers who had signed up for their loyalty rewards texting program that I'm going to be talking about. That text simply said, um, Camp I is going to be open today with regular hours. If you can brave the weather and join us, we'll give you a free order of Crab Rangoon, one per table. Show this text. And uh, they had 60 people who came in, showed that text uh, to get that free crab rangoon. Now, we didn't set any sales records that day. Uh, 60 is not a lot of people, but on a day when we have six inches of snow, they were thrilled because that was 60 people that came in, turned probably a money losing day into an okay day for them. That's what I do, and that's the kind of power I can bring to small businesses using the power of broadcast text messaging. Uh, in a nutshell, uh, my business combines the 99% open rate, read rate of text messaging. How many of you do texting on your phone? Pretty much all of you. That number may not surprise you. 99% of texts are read. Nothing else can touch that. Um, the experts say that about one out of five emails are read these days. Um, we bring that 99% read rate, we combine that with a very easy to use rewards program to help businesses grow their business. Uh, it all revolves around our loyalty rewards kiosk that we mount uh, usually near the main point of sale in a business. And uh, it's very, very simple. And I want everybody to understand, simplicity is the key to this. It's very, very simple. Customers simply input their mobile phone number. They get an immediate text message that says you've joined the CanPi VIP Club. There's some disclaimer language we have to provide with that, including telling them they can always reply stop if they ever went out of the program. They're not locked in for life. Um, and then every time that consumer comes in to the business and makes a purchase, they can check in with their number. All they have to do is put their number into the kiosk and uh, the kiosk keeps track of all their visits. Maybe after 5, 10, 15 check-ins, they get a free sandwich or a free appetizer. So we're rewarding them for their continued business. And then, just like in the case I shared with you at CanPi, we can also send out regular broadcast text message offers. We don't ever do more than one a week per business because you don't want to wear people out with texting. 
But we have found with our experiences across the country that one a week is, is usually pretty good. But some businesses I work with do every other week. I have some that do once a month. I'm going to pass the kiosk around. Um, just put your mobile number in there and see. You'll get a couple of text messages. You'll also know, you'll, I'm going to shut the program down afterwards. I'm not going to lock you in or send you a bunch of stuff. Trust me on that. You might want it. Well, you might want it. Uh, I've set up a little demo just for th this morning's meeting. Uh, you'll also notice when people put their number in, there's going to be a little icon that comes up that says like us on Facebook. So we also integrate with Facebook. If customers hit that button, it'll send the consumer, the customer, another text with a direct link to the business's Facebook. So we do integrate with Facebook. Just uh, 10 digits. You don't have to do the one, just 270 or whatever your area code is. Um, a lot of bells and whistles go into this. We can do sweepstakes. The kiosk gives us a lot of options. Um, the kiosk is our big deal. The other big deal that sets us apart from a lot of similar companies, and I want to stress similar, there's nobody out there exactly like us, but I also write all the text message offers for all my clients. I am full service. Yeah, that means we charge a little bit more than most companies, but we think we're well worth it because you get, all my clients get me. And, and this is what I do. That's just a well, sample. I have to make That's just a sample. <laughs> That's just a sample of what it could be in a typical restaurant. Um, but I, I've become, uh, writing has always been my thing. We have 160 characters in a text message. I don't know if you all know that. That's the limit in a text. Tweets are uh, 140 characters, text are 160. But we can say anything we want in that 160 characters. Doesn't always have to be a discount. It just could be, hey, we've changed our hours, come see us, or whatever that business wants to put in the hands of their customers. We bring that power. Uh, to those businesses. Um, we can do some targeted text based on how many times people have checked in at the kiosk. So I, we could just send a text message to people that haven't checked in at the kiosk in 30 days. Or maybe people that have checked in five or more times, their best customers. So we can be really targeted with our messages as well. Um, it works because it's simple and it works because texting is effective in driving traffic. We can put text messages on people's phones where they're looking uh, at a time when they will do, are most likely to react. Uh, how awesome is it when you're getting hungry around 1045 <laughs> to get a text message saying, show this text, get $2 off a salad today at Smiley Moose Deli. That's the type of power that we have. So um, I think that's about six minutes right there. It goes very, very quickly. <laughs> um, I have explained a whole lot about my company. I've been doing this for two and a half years. I am a licensee of a company in California called SMS Masterminds. They've been doing this since 2009, so they're a relatively new company. Uh, it was privately held until recently when they were bought by another company called Spin Smart. So there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of um, that this company is continuously bringing new bells and whistles to our program. But I'm a licensee of that. I, um, uh, we're, there was about 150 of us around the country now. We're in most major metros. Uh, my official territory is uh, Vanderburg, Warwick, and Henderson counties. But as long as there's not a licensee in other areas, I can sell. And I actually have, it's really spread out on me in the last six months especially, I now have a kiosk spread from Louisville all the way to Marion, Illinois, and uh, from Bowling Green, and yesterday I just picked up a client who has a store in Bloomington, Indiana. So I'm really getting spread out. Uh, that is, is a challenge for me. Um, these little kiosks are wonderful, but you know, it's technology. Occasionally they will go on the fritz. So I, I need to be able to get to my clients. A lot of times I can diagnose issues across the phone if my clients are having issues, but I can't be too spread out. I don't want to have somebody, you know, in Timbuktu, for example. Right. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, I know from experience, like I said, we had your, your kiosk at the chiropractor's office I worked for, and it was really great because when the snow day, for example, we closed, and they sent out texts to say, we're not open today, you, you know, stay home, if we couldn't get a hold of everybody, and because I know the office manager couldn't get in to um, get to the computer and call everybody. Right. So that worked out really well, and I know I've been to lots of restaurants where they are. Have you found there's other um, 
places that they work well at? The oh, absolutely. Like restaurants and yeah, Re retailers. Uh, our number one market is restaurants for obvious reasons. Everybody, you know, restaurant. Everybody eats. Uh, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, retailers are a big market. Salons. I work with tanning businesses, some hair salons. Um, medical spas. Any place that does, you know, these medical spas are everywhere that do uh, Botox and microderma abrasions. A lot of those, so yeah, a lot of different businesses. I, what I tell people, any business that wants to get their best customers to come in more often, that's a potential client for me. Okay, let's go the other way with that. Um, I think most people probably like me, you have a bad experience at a restaurant. You just never go back. You're not gonna tell them why you're not coming back. But I would see this as a good opportunity to find out why. You got the people there that visited this restaurant once or twice, and all of a sudden they didn't come back anymore. Would it work to send them a text? Is I noticed that you haven't returned. Uh, would you please be so kind as to tell us why you haven't returned? Now you've got maybe even an anonymous person that says, well, you know, I noticed that they don't wash their hands when they come out of the restaurant or something <laughs> like that. I mean, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. that has stopped me it's from returning because I left the men's room. So well, this guy will leave too. He went right on and walked right back into the kitchen. He may have died in and his hands, but that kept me from going back to that restaurant. And I never told him why. Uh, that's a great point. I haven't done that with any of my clients, but we could. And the reason we could is because, again, we can identify people how many times they've checked in. So, if some, And I, I know when they joined the program. So if somebody joined a year ago, checked in once, has never been back, we could send all those people that have been in that situation a text and say, reply with, we haven't seen you for a while, reply to this text with the reason why maybe we haven't seen you. They could reply on their phone via text. That would come to my phone. And then I can share that with my clients. And it gives them an opportunity to correct the problem that is ongoing. And how many other people have they lost because they didn't know to correct this problem? I, I like that. And I, I like that a lot. Yes? Do you send out any kind of like monthly marketing report for the oh, business owner? So that way they know how many clicks they're getting or check-ins or whatever. So Great. they see that it's worth it? Great question. All of my clients get a weekly report. <clears throat> that I emailed them every uh, Monday, and it covers all those things. It's a, it's a graphic report that shows them how many people joined their program last week, how many people checked in on what day they checked in, how many people earned any of the rewards they got for checking in for <laughs> fifth or tenth time. So yeah, all my clients get that on a weekly basis. You just call like, you, I guess, and tell you what kind of promotion we're wanting to send out, and then you come up with the, the lingo and that sort of thing? All my clients are different. I have some folks that send out a regular text that we send out text every week. Mm. Some, you know, I, I, after I, they become a client, I kind of get, I work with them. I kind of know what their ideas are. I have some businesses that simply just want to use this as a rewards program, mm. are not interested in sending out a lot of offers, and that's fine. But yes, I stay in touch with them. A lot of my clients, I text, I email, I call them. Hey, do you want to do something this week? I'm real big about stopping in. I visit with my clients a lot. So yes, I do all that. Okay. I have a couple questions. One is the reason why you started the program because you do have a nice job, you know, being the, the chamber person. And so that was a nice lucrative job with good paychecks. You stepped outside the box and did this. I'd like to know why that is. Also, I'd like to know what your future growth is and what your biggest challenges in for this program. I was uh, president of the Chamber of Commerce in Owensboro for eight years, worked a lot with uh, Harriet Whitaker when she was president down here at the Chamber. I left the Owensboro Chamber in late 2011, went to another chamber up by Louisville, bad move on my part. Okay. I was out of that job in four months, didn't work out. I found myself for the first time since I was 15 without a job, and at the age of 45, that was very scary to me. But in the chamber world, I had always seen people come and go with businesses, and I used to think to myself, I'm as smart as that guy. I think I, I always wanted to own a business. And in 2012, early 2012, I had the perfect opportunity. I actually found this business uh, of all places. I was looking for a job, came across this opportunity of all places on Craigslist. That's where they were, and they've, act they've actually picked up several licensees on Craigslist. Did a little research, loved it, and uh, in a span of about three weeks, I was in business. Um, the entry fees to get in this business were not very much. That's, that's one thing that attracted me. There are monthly fees that are involved. Um, 
Future growth, that's a great question. Uh, I now have uh, over 50 clients. When I started my business, my parent company said, you know, you can pretty much do this all to, by yourself. Sell, service, write text, until you get to about 25 clients, and then you're gonna have to have some help. I'm well over 50, <laughs> and I'm still doing it all myself. Now, fortunately, I am very organized. I, I manage my time very well. Uh, but if I get many more clients, I'm going to have to look at doing something to bring in a partner on. Um, I don't know what that's going to look like yet. I haven't gotten my mind completely wrapped around that. It's a funny thing. When I worked at the chamber, I used to see businesses get started, and I'd have business owners tell me, well, I really am happy where I'm at. I'm not sure I want to grow anymore. And I thought that was the dumbest thing I ever heard. Now I get it. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I get it. It's really funny, depending on what hat you're wearing, what your perspective is. Um, but like I said, I'm really branching out. I, I'm getting referrals from the whole area uh, and places I never thought I would be. So um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's fun, but I don't do near the knocking on doors I used to looking for new clients. I don't have to because I'm very busy. Another question? Ready? I know the restaurant industry's fault with a high failure rate in it. Is there a does that make your accounts fairly volatile too? Do you go through a lot of new startups and lose them pretty quickly? Or? Well, we were just talking one of the, a client, a restaurant in Evansville recently closed. But it's not been a big deal for me because I, I am really not in the business of helping struggling businesses. I'm more in the business of helping successful businesses be more successful, taking that next step into mobile marketing. So that hasn't been a big deal. It hasn't been a big problem for me. And, and frankly, uh, there's a lot of businesses out there that are in startup mode that really can't afford what I do. There are cheaper alternatives out there. Now, they're not apples and apples. There's cheap texting programs out there. Uh, but no, that has not been a big problem for me. Do you find, <clears throat> do your customers, do you go to them and, and get the customer or do hey, somebody out of the blue call and says, hey, I, I've heard about you, I've seen it. Both want to sign up. Yeah, now originally for the first year and a half, it, I, I have knocked on a lot of doors. But what's happened is over the course of the last 12 months, these become really nice marketing pieces for me. Uh, people see these other business owners and say, hey, where'd you get this? And who do I talk to about this? So I get a lot of calls. Um, I get more and more of those all the time. I get a lot of good referrals too. Uh, Carol recently set me up with a friend of hers who owns a salon in Evansville. She texted me out of the blue and said, hey, we'll see Barbie at clients. She needs what you do. Two weeks later, they were a client. Love those. That's, that was awesome. <laughs> uh, there's been some clients I've signed up. Uh, one recently I probably never would have gone into. Just didn't see him as a potential client, but they called me and it's a good fit. So, that, a lot more of that recently. You said a lot of people use it as a reward. So, you could say that for five check ins, they could just turn it to the cashier and say, hey, I need a. Yeah, what happens on that reward check in, whether that's five, ten, or whatever? They get a text that says, congratulations, you've earned a uh, free sandwich. There's always an expiration date. We don't leave it open-ended. It'll say, show this text. And there's also a redemption function, a validation function on the kiosk. So there's a two-phase uh, setup there for getting that freebie, whatever it is. And a lot of my clients will do uh, a free something every so many check-ins. We can also do tiered rewards, where you get something at 5, something different at 10. Uh, one of the new things we've recently added is a birthday club. Uh, Spuds and Stuff in Evansville now uses my program. When you join there, you're asked, when you put your number in, what's your birthday month? And you choose that, and then on the first day of your birthday month, you're going to get a text saying, Spuds and Stuff wants to wish you a happy birthday month. We want to be first with a gift. Check in at the kiosk before October 31st to get a free birthday brownie. So that's really cool. And, and of course, we can still send them people other text messages as well. Will your kiosk do a beam and that type of thing now, or you got to, still got to put it all in? No, you still have to put your number in. And actually, the uh, the texting industry, a lot of people don't know this. The phone companies, AT and T, Sprint, all the carriers, they actually regulate the texting industry. <coughs> There's a lot of rules around the texting industry. People have to put their own number in. Um, if somebody wants out of the program, they reply stop, we have to take their number out. What happens a lot of times is when some, I sent out last month about 136,000 texts for all my clients. 
Sometimes people will, they want out, but they don't know, they, they don't remember to reply stop. So they reply with, hey, take me off your list, or I move, please remove my number. All those texts come to my phone. My clients never see those. That's part of how I manage the program. So I go in the back end of the system and pull those numbers, 10 to 12 of those a week. Uh, but again, I'm full service. My clients don't have to mess with that. They never see it. All right, can your customer, you're talking about your new birthday list, Actually, you do have that ability because the second text message that if you put your number in, the second one you got said something like uh, uh, restaurants, retailers can all benefit from I'm your VIP. We can make that message anything that we want. We could ask for an uh, email address, reply with your email address so we could have their email. We could collect information that way. <clears throat> but we don't focus on that. And one of the reasons our program works, and there's a lot of participation, is because it's so easy. Mm -hmm. I see rewards programs, uh, a, a, big, um, a big gas station, convenience store chain recently started a program. They ask for everything but your social security number. I, it's too much. I mean, if you put your customers through a lot of hoops to join your rewards program, a lot of them won't do it. Some will, but a lot won't. So the simplicity of putting in your mobile number is a big reason this works so well. Okay. Any more questions? Can you work in the Bahamas? <laughs> <laughs> That's all my question. Can you work in the Bahamas? Oh, yeah. As long as I have my laptop and this phone, I can work from anywhere. And I've had to do that from time to time. Yeah. Work in the Bahamas, you had to? Not in the Bahamas, but <laughs> being, out of town, being out of town, I love to work in the Bahamas. Is there anything you wish people knew about your business or that you'd like to tell us that's like a misconception that you want to straighten out or? My, yeah. No, not, not really. But my biggest hurdle with some businesses, uh, well, let me, let me put it this way. Uh, <clears throat> If I go into a business and see the decision maker is 40 or under, it's usually a slam dunk. If they're older than 40, it sometimes can be really tough. Uh, because those of us who have, who, who use texting all the time, uh, sorry guys. <laughs> I mean, the, the people who, who get texting, sorry. They, they get this, I mean, just like that. Other people, not so much. So. Um, you might trade that to like 50 and under, Jamie, just. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> 50 and under. 50 and under. 50 and under. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. You feel better about that? <laughs> you still miss me by 25. <laughs> Generally speaking. Generally speaking. Not that, yeah. But you get close. Can the business owner create their own text messages? And they can. They do have that option. And I had I had a couple of businesses early on that I worked with said, oh, we don't want you to do it. We'll do it ourselves. Said, okay, here, here's how you do it. After about a month, they said, uh, we think we want you to do it. Yeah. So the answer is yes, but nobody does that right now. It's like if I was to do this or whatever, you know, I'd like to be hands-on on what actually gets sent out. You know, well, you will be to... because what happens is, let's say you contact me and say, hey, we want to do a... Uh, buy one, get one on Thursday, Jody. Can you put that together? I go in the system, put that in text lingo, mm -hmm. and then I will text that to you so you can see it before it ever goes out. Okay, so you get to approve it. And that's a lot of my customers do want to approve it. Others will say, Jody, just run with it. I trust you. Okay. It's about half and half usually. Right. Uh, but if you want that sort of thing, you build that relationship. You know, you kind Until of we get that rapport them. where they trust right. me. Right. <laughs> Which is fine. Customers are getting the message that you're actually wanting them to get, you know, yeah. rather than being wrong self benefit. Okay. Do you have a cost structure for these? Uh, I do. Yes, that? my or base. Both. Uh, my my base rate is one hundred and twenty one hundred and twenty nine dollars a month. What location? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, it depends. But I've done three four locations at that rate. Okay. On top of that, it's five cents per text. That's any text that's generated by the program. Like the text that you all got when you joined, those were two texts. That's a dime, okay? If we send out an offer, an offer to a thousand people, that's times a nickel. So, um, you know, it's 129 a month. That's what I consider, that's what I call that a management fee. That's your rent on my system, uh, me, the analytics, me writing your text, getting the weekly reports, 
plus you have to pay for the text. I have to pay for the phone companies for all my text. So that's why I can't leave it open-ended. Uh, I have customers that, I have a client that last month sent out about 25,000 texts. Uh, my, my most successful client. They have four locations. He's up here doing math. <laughs> and, and what I do with a lot of my clients, because sometimes, sometimes when I uh, when I explain, sometimes when I explain that, you know, a lot of times people will say, "Well, what's that five cents going to add up to?" What I tell them is, "You tell me what your budget is. If you don't want to spend more than two hundred twenty-five dollars a month, we'll never spend more than that." Because I am always watching. I know how many texts are being generated. So if they they may call me on a Friday and say, "Hey, I want to send out a text." I say. Well, Bill, you're at the $225. I'm happy to send out a text message, but it's going to cost you a little bit more than that this month. So it's their decision. They're never going to get a surprise text bill for $375. It doesn't work that way. Just way around that, okay, so you have somebody checks in and they have, to have a redemption. Is there a way to have the redemption show up on the, on the screen itself? So that, yeah, there, that, right, there's a validation, validation. Yeah, there's a validation uh, process on the kiosk itself. Because then you can use the text messages for, uh, hey, I haven't seen you in a month. You know, yeah. Can you come, you know, come in? And, yeah. And we can also, actually, if people don't have a mobile number, they can use their home number because the kiosk will keep up with their home number as well. So it's basically as long as somebody has a phone, they can participate. Okay. Cool. Everybody got your questions in? That was great, Jody. Thank you so much. All right.